Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of the TLS3 round of 16. We are going to be casting Group B today, and I am Sal, and with me as always, of course, is Elegant. Good to be here, as always. Uh, yes, as Sal has already said, it is going to be Group B of, uh, of the round of 16. So we're going to see some pretty cool players today after yesterday's also interesting performance. Today we've got maybe a slightly more um, kind of finely balanced bracket to show you guys. Um, in terms of the uh, who who we can expect to be performing well against whom, um, I think it's going to be quite a close on today. We've got uh, we've got fan favorites, we've got um, top notch ghostiness, we've got it all going on. Indeed, we do. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, today's players are going to be Technics, Bakryu, Andre, and Dragon. That's right. So we've got two Zergs uh, and two race pickers. In fact, now uh, I would assume that Dragon will just be playing Protoss here, and Andre will just be playing Terran, um, since that seems like it would work out for the race pickers. They, they don't have to play any mirrors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a, a nice uh, racial balance here. So we're gonna have a ZVZ uh, for the first match. We could potentially end up with a ZVZ at the end, although I find that uh, highly unlikely. Um, although quickly before we do any group predictions, uh, just a quick recap of what happened yesterday. If you haven't seen the games yet, just cover your ears for 30 seconds. So, uh, of course, we did have Siki and True Touch advancing from the group. Uh, Siki going uh, without dropping a single game, actually dispatching um, both uh, Freeman and True Touch pretty handily there. Pretty surprising, actually. His best of three against True Touch just kind of dismantled him. Uh, and then, uh, and then True Touch managing to take the final match against Zeraki as well. So, uh, so we got two Zergs in the round of eight already. Uh, congrats to those guys, Zoraki and Freeman unfortunately knocked out. So, back to Group B, as you see on the screen here. What do you think is going to happen in this group, Elegant? Well, I think we've got some interesting dynamics playing out in this group. Technics, he has to be the favorite. Technics, who of course was uh, was second place, um, I believe, in the, in the TLS 2, yep. um, which was of course the, the previous season of this very tournament. So you'd expect him to go far. You'd expect him to get out of pretty much any group. Um, top, top player there. So Technics, um, I think quite unequivocally, he's going to be everyone's favorite to go through this one. But the rest of the group starts to get a little bit dicey because we have, of course, got um, Andre, Bakuryu, and Dragon. And these guys have some fairly interesting statistics as well against um, against the various racial matchups. Um, we've got some some kind of real strengths and weaknesses to show. Um, quite notably, Dragon um, is incredibly incredibly strong against Terran, but his other matchups seem to to kind of wane a little bit and let him down. Um, so I'm thinking he might have a little bit of bother here um, facing up against those two Zerg players. I think so. I think you're right, Elgin. But you know you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like an entire group prediction here. And oh, go on. It's, it's interesting because you see, uh, exactly as you said, Dragon, if he plays PBT, he'll probably be good to go. PBZ, it'll be a bit more dicey. Andre, other, Andre, on the other hand, got here on the back of really strong TBZ, yeah. um, which, uh, I mean, his round of 24 group was all Zergs, and he actually 2-0'd the group, uh, surprisingly. But, but, I think the way the group is going to go is that despite there being two Zergs in the group, I think uh, Andre will actually have to win against Dragon twice, which means Dragon's going to advance. So what's going to happen is, yeah. uh, Technics will be, Technics will 2-0 the group easy. I mean, he's basically... Oh, the best foreigner after Zeki at the moment. Yeah. I mean, there's some debate about it, but I would, I, you know, if I had to pick, I would say Technics is the best foreigner at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, besides Zeki, and is ZVZ and, though not not flawless by any standards? It's, it's not, but I mean, he did uh, actually just today win uh, the uh, Brood, B Brood .de tournament of something. Oh, did he? I can't remember exactly what was, it's called, but he beat yeah. he beat Zerg in that uh, tournament as well. So. Um, Although actually, having said that, I think they all race in that match. But anyway, anyway, uh, so I think I think Technics. So Technics will be Bakuryu. I think Dragon will be Andre, as you said. The PVT is good for a Dragon for sure. Uh, so it'll be Technics Dragon in the winners match. Technics takes takes it easily. Uh, I don't see Dragon taking a PVZ off him in, at all. Um, then yeah, losers okay. is Andre versus Bakuryu. That is the first interesting match. I think the last two matches today are going to be the most interesting. Andre versus yeah. Bakuryu. I'm not sure, and it's even more interesting because. Bakryu, of course, uh, co-hosted the round of 24 group selection with me, during which he sort of BM'd Andre a little bit. And if you read Andre's interview <laughs> that he Crazy. did, uh, which is in the preview for today, 
Um, he actually said, you know, uh, BC Dagger asked him who his rivals were, and Andre's like, that Bakryu guy BM'd me on the stream, I'm gonna get him back. So I, I think, I think <laughs> it'll be a really interesting losers match here. Yeah, I think so. Um, the language is not quite so clean. Sale is sanitizing it for you guys, obviously. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Andre really seems to have an axe to grind there, so this is this is his chance to do so, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so for the final match then, so I, I'm actually not 100% sure who will win Andre versus Bakryu. Um, I'm actually just going to go out on a limb and give it to Andre just to make things more interesting. Because that wow. means Andre will go down to the final match to play Dragon, which means he'll have to play Dragon twice actually, so he'll play two TVPs despite the group having two Zergs in it. Which is actually really going to hurt him, and it's like a little yeah. bit weird if you th if like just looking at the racial distribution. But I'm guessing that's what's going to happen, which means Dragon probably has a good chance to advance from the group. So that was my logic for my staff picks of Technics and Dragon. Well, that's not too bad, but I think it may come a little bit unstuck because Andre, he's a funny character, isn't he? He's a real funny one, um, uh, and he has some deeply unreliable tendencies, <laughs> um, and I think that 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 just kind of might come to bear a little bit against a very highly organized player such as Bakuryu. Um, mm, absolutely. Uh, so, so that could be where the prediction kind of comes unstuck a little bit, but it's by no means, by no means impossible. Um, it could, could very well happen, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, no, you, you're definitely right. That, that I think is going to be the deciding point in this group, uh, as far as my predictions go at least, in that Andre yeah. versus Bakuryu match. So not only is that like the most interesting as far as who advances goes, but there's the whole backstory as well. I just, it just makes me so excited for this group, <laughs> Elegance. So excited. Yeah, me too. Me All too. right. Uh, but the first game uh, is going to be Technics versus Bakuryu. It will be a best of one, uh, just in case anyone is still unaware. Uh, the first two matches are best of one, and then it'll be best of threes for the rest. The maps will be the same as yesterday. Polaris, Rhapsody, Andromeda, and Fighting Spirit as required. Yep. So yeah, for this first CVZ, who do you think is going to take it, Elegant? Um, I'm going to say Technics, mm -hmm. um, even though Bakuryu is, he, he's he's pretty well on it with his, his ZVZ, he's got his theory down as we see repeatedly, uh, his game knowledge is really, really good, but I think Technics, he just overall has the edge as a player, though it's, it's it, it, I mean it when I say I think this is one that could go either way, because Bakuryu is, is a very capable player, very knowledgeable, yeah. and he really gets to grips with the intricacies, and ZVZ, that really, really um, it comes into play, and I don't think Technics is miles ahead of him in that matchup. And not only is he uh, really knowledgeable about all the matchups, so Bakuyu also is one of the few foreigners who really takes time to prepare. Um, you know, kind of going against the uh, stereotypical lazy foreigner sentiment. Yeah, just um, show up. I mean, play. you know, if you just look at last season where he uh, 2 0 True Touch in the round of 24, basically, mm, um, yeah. you know, on the back of uh, a bit of luck, but a, a lot, some good preparation as well. So, I don't know. I mean, Technics also plays a lot of games on stream and in tournaments. So, Bakri will have a lot of games to study uh, from Technics and he will if, then. if he wants to. Yeah, he will. I, I'm sure he will. All right. So, uh, I think that is enough introduction then. Shall we go on to game number one? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Here we go into game number one at the bottom right position as the orange Zerg we have LRM Bakaryu at the top left as the yellow Zerg we have Technics BG repping up Bulgaria. Yeah we do indeed Bulgaria. Who, who won that Bulgaria versus Psystorm show no, versus Thing Magic show? I match? believe uh, versus well, Poland, Defiler sorry. versus Psystorm right? I believe Defiler won. Um, I kind of thought of it funnily enough as Bulgaria versus uh, versus Russia, I don't See, really... See, I think, in my opinion, it should have been more Bulgaria versus Russia, but Defiler just like, it, it was... Called in the favors, well, didn't the they? the thing is, apparently it, it wasn't, it was like, people who visit the site regularly, and so hmm. since there were a few other non-Russians who regularly go to Defiler.ru, they were able to yeah. recruit like Alfio and Yonzerg, which I thought was Yeah, it was there. people who kind of represent the website. Yeah rather than the nationality of the website. So I kind of I kind of see where that's coming from, but yeah. Calling in favors, Russian Mafia style. <laughs> uh, 
I, I kind of thought that Defiler would probably be um, would probably be the winners of that simply because they I, I think they have a wider reach than Psystorm dot dot eu. I mean, I've heard of Defiler, but I hadn't heard of Psystorm dot eu before. Mm. Interestingly enough, only a couple of days before that, I asked um, one of my teammates uh, uh, just as kind of curiosity. Did do you know if there are any Bulgarian kind of uh, Starcraft websites? Because I was thinking about you know other oh, Starcraft portals, and I was just and he was like, yeah, I don't know, I have no idea. And then suddenly. Out of the blue, this this thing pops up. And my question nice. is answered. Yeah, All right, uh, yeah. we'll come back to that in a second. Just quickly, the builds. We had an overpool uh, with a gas from Bakri, so very, very normal stuff coming from him. On the other side, I believe this was a 12 gas into pool uh, from Technics. Might have been 11 gas. I wasn't quite paying attention, but uh, it was gas first build uh, either way. So, you know, his pool's going to be a little bit more delayed than Bakri's, but not enough to make uh, a huge difference here, at least as far as the, uh, the initial Zergling shenanigans go. Um, and he's going to have a ton more gas as well. In fact, let's get a look at the gas. So Bakri now just hitting 32. Um, Technic's actually not that much further ahead on the gas. I think because Bakri went for the overpool gas and Technic's went, went 12 drones first. So his gas actually wasn't that much further ahead, but he is going to have more drones. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be kind of a, a little bit of a curious situation. I, li I like ZVZ for that reason. You know, you get these kind of things which you're not quite sure what's going to play out into an advantage or disadvantage depending on like individual little decisions throughout the game. I think it's really, mm. really cool. Um, and yeah, our, our layer timing is um, quite noticeably ahead right now for, for Bakuryu, so we'll see We'll see how that kind of functions. But it's not too much of a kind of Huh, look at this. Bakuryu's gone for a creep colony because he doesn't yeah, want to make Yeah, interesting. He, has not made, he didn't save three larvae to make the initial round of Zerglings. He just kept making drones and made a creep colony, a uh, sunken colony instead to defend against any initial uh, Ling aggression. This is actually a move that I've seen Bakuryu do a number of times in ZVZ. Mm. Um, I don't quite know why he likes to do this over getting the initial Zerglings because I think it makes it quite passive what you're doing. Um, but, uh, yeah. but it seems to be his kind of thing. Um, I, I, the one advantage I can think of it is um, it does make it quite passive, but that if you know that you're going to be playing passive, it kind of takes unknowns out of the equation, and that can be quite a nice thing to do, I, I, I'd imagine, so it's kind yeah. of really be able to uh, set out your stall early on, and so you've just got a very clear game plan that you just have to execute, and it's not going to be flapped up by so much by what the opponent's doing. I think that it kind of has that kind of thing going for it. Uh, and it, he shouldn't find any problems with it. He's got his sunken. He's popping out a few links, but he has gone equal in in link counts now. Nonetheless, he's got some, wait, two fewer links, but he's got that sunken as well. So maybe it's not the best investment. Um, now Bakuryu's speed has finished, and Technics looks like he skipped speed completely. So this could be really interesting. If Bakuryu can get a run by here, that could be really bad for Technics. One thing actually going to see these six things of Bakuryu, uh, Aron coming, he's going to have to go back up the ramp and uh, and block it here. He's actually got a drone coming out here for some reason. Not sure why. It looks like Bakuryu does catch that one slowly. Okay, it looks like he's just going to use it to help defend actually. Uh, oh, that's right, because he didn't actually make any additional links, so he just has to pull out the drone. Looks like Bakuryu uh, not quite going to try and break up the ramp, although he does have some more Zerglings incoming. I don't know why Technics it doesn't have more links coming out here. He's got the two hatcheries worth of larva. Uh, I, I guess he's just saving his larva for the mutas, but this could be really oh bad God. for you breaking up the ramp here. Technics making a pretty oh. big blunder, not making enough Zerglings to defend. He's got a couple more Zerglings now, but his drones oh, no. are in serious trouble here. How many drones will Bakuryu kill before this attack is cleaned up? That is the question. It's like one more drone goes down. That's two total now. Three drones <laughs> have fallen. He's actually going to go after the Spire. No, just going to ward away these Zerglings. He might try and force a cancel on the Spire. That would be really bad for Technics here. Technics in a lot of trouble. Oh, Technics is in a huge amount of trouble. He's lost four drones out. His links are just constantly being out positioned by Bakuryu. Uh, his Spire not looking in amazing shape either. It has got up, so he will be able to make um, some muters. Will we see another drone go down? We do see, oh, and nearly another one as well. Bakuryu doing a huge amount of damage um, and really, really counteracting what we said about it being a passive build. The other thing I didn't really think of about this build is it does allow him to be a bit more free with his initial Zerglings. Yes. He doesn't have to be quite so focused on defense as he would if he were really afraid of small backstabs and things like that. He can, he can really just kind of commit a little bit more and nice, yeah. hiding some links around the corner there as well. They're going to dart in and they're going to be able to probably grab a few drones um, before they're eventually got rid of. This is a great move by Bakuryu. He is so far on top of this game. Oh man, one drone, two drones, three drones down, four drones down. Are we oh going to see God. five drones? We are going to see five drones, six, six. drones. 
seven drones, eight drones, only two drones left mining at all for Technics. Technics Technic is only two drones. We have a second hatchery on the, on the way for Bakri. These slowlings coming in here, but there's already a something. The mutas are already out. The slowlings of Technic can do absolutely nothing. He even pauses underneath the mutalists, not going in straight away. It doesn't even matter. These lings will not even kill a single drone. They're barely going to get a single hit here. Technics, what can he possibly do now? He's got three drones mining, no gas mining. He's got four mutas, but GG from GG. Technics. And Bakaryu pulling the immediate upset in game number one, taking out Technics. Wow. wow. That was fantastic play from Bakaryu. Flawless, flawless Ling play there. Didn't even need the news list in the end. Great, great play. So convincing against Technics. I just, wow. I'm wow. so shocked that after <laughs> opening with no Zerglings and instead making a Sunken Colony, he won the game with Zerglings. I wonder if actually it was partly because of that opening that Technics allowed that to happen because it must I mean I wonder if you know he got in with the Overlord he saw the Sunken he's like oh well clearly Bakaryu is not going to try any kind of Ling attack because you know he's built a Sunken he's just going to defend and go and try and like rush for Muta and save all his money for Muta so maybe he decided to skimp on this <laughs> anti-Zergling defense in response to that and then suddenly got caught off guard I mean he didn't get the Zergling speed at all yeah maybe I mean that's that's very very viable uh, viable possibility because yeah like you said no zergling speed and zergling speed is, is really important for for defense um not just for attacking it's it's crucial it's so hard to run after links with speed if you haven't got it as well so it looks like he was lulled into a bit of a false sense of security there and Bakri just had his options really really well covered he could get out there he could do he could do uh, nice attacks uh, and he could kind of keep links hidden as well like we saw him do which was the ultimate kind of real game winning move seven drones in one go who'd have thought it um and yeah, that, that very, very smart build from Bakuryu. I like it, and I like how it played out. Hmm. And uh, I, I am a little bit annoyed, though, Elegant, because in, a, in approximately uh, you know 10 minutes of gameplay, my entire group prediction has just been uh, destroyed. Yeah, my, my whole analysis of every matchup and how it was going to go, nope, done. It's crumbled to dust. <sighs> I, Man, didn't spend I spent hours time. thinking that up. <laughs> hours! <laughs> I <sighs> really hope that's not true. All right, well, we're going to go to a quick break and then come back for the second match, which uh, will be a PVT between Dragon and Andres. You guys in a bit? Anyway.